In this lesson, we're going to look at determining whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar. To do this, we first have to be able to draw a Lewis structure and determine its shape. We also need to be able to determine if it contains polar bonds or nonpolar bonds. If you are struggling with either of these concepts, please review the appropriate videos. In this lesson, we are really just going to look at examples. So nitrogen is in group 15, so it has five valence electrons. We have three hydrogens. Each hydrogen has one valence electron, giving us eight electrons. If we put the nitrogen in the center and surround it with our hydrogens, and then begin with our single bonds, we still have two electrons left, so we place them on top of the nitrogen. Next, we need to look up electronegativity values. Nitrogen's electronegativity value is 3, hydrogen's electronegativity value is 2.1. So if I do the big number minus the small number, I get a difference of 0.9. That means that those bonds are polar. And when we have polar bonds, we indicate that by going and placing a delta negative on our more electronegative element, which is our nitrogen, and a delta positive on each of our less electronegative elements, which are our hydrogens. That is showing us that we know that those bonds are polar. Next, to determine whether or not it's a polar molecule, we need to look at its shape and determine if it's symmetrical or asymmetrical. Ammonia, NH3, is trigonal pyramid in shape. And if you remember from our other lesson, that means that that is an asymmetrical molecule. So because this has polar bonds and is asymmetrical, this is a polar molecule. Let's look at another example, hydrogen and bromine. Hydrogen has one valence electron. Bromine is in group 17, so it has seven. So again, we can start with either the bromine or the hydrogen, and we place our electrons. That is our Lewis structure. Then we need to look up electronegativity values. Hydrogen is 2.1, bromine is 3.0. So we always do the large number minus the small number, giving us a difference of 0.9. That means these bonds are polar bonds. And when we have polar bonds, we indicate which end is slightly negative by placing the delta negative on our more electronegative element and the delta positive on our less electronegative element. If we then look at the shape for this, this is going to be a linear shape molecule. And you might think that that is symmetrical. However, if you look, if we split the molecule in half, you'll see that you have a negative side and you have a positive side. And that's really, by definition, what a polar molecule is. So this is, in fact, a polar molecule. It has a negative side and a positive side. Let's look at carbon tetrafluoride. So carbon has four valence electrons. Each fluorine has seven, giving us 32 electrons. So our carbon goes in the center with our four fluorines surrounding it, single bonds between each, and then put our extra electrons around our fluorines. And you will see when you are done that we've used all 32 of our electrons. If we then look at our electronegativity values, carbon is 2.5, fluorine is 4.0. So we do the large number, subtract the small number, and that gives us a difference of 1.5. So that means these bonds are polar. It has polar bonds. And we indicate bond polarity by placing the delta negative on our more electronegative element and a delta positive on our least electronegative element. Then, if you look up the, the shape for this, this is tetrahedral. And a tetrahedral molecule is a symmetrical molecule. So even though this molecule has a polar bond, four polar bonds, they are evenly shared on all four sides of that carbon in a symmetrical way. 
So this is a nonpolar molecule. In our last example, we have CH4. Carbon, again, has four valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one, so we have eight electrons. If we place our carbon and our hydrogens on either side, and then begin with our single bonds, we have used all eight of our electrons. Then we go and we check the electronegativity values. So you have 2.5 and 2.1. So if we do 2.5 minus 2.1, we get a difference of 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is less than 0 0.5, so this has nonpolar bonds. As soon as something has nonpolar bonds, it does not matter that that is a symmetrical molecule. It is therefore a nonpolar molecule. So again, as soon as something has nonpolar bonds, it, the shape does not matter. It can be symmetrical or asymmetrical. It will result in it being a nonpolar molecule. I hope this has helped you review whether or not a molecule is polar or nonpolar.